Sandy, congratulations on being inducted into the California Wrestling Hall of Fame. Thank you. Uh, I'm going to ask you a few questions here about your life. and uh, You've had some unique experiences with being a two-sport athlete and being able to you know, achieve things at a, the highest level, which we'd like to hear about that. Okay. <laughs> Who is the individual that had the greatest impact in your wrestling career? That question was really hard for me because I can't think of one individual who had a really great impact on my wrestling career. I think what was most impactful for me were the people who got me to love the sport of wrestling, got me to stay in wrestling. Mm -hmm. And I can't attribute that to one person. There were many people. Um, from the first day I stepped in a wrestling mat and put on wrestling shoes when I was used to doing judo and not wearing shoes and wearing a big gi rather than a singlet, the people in the sport are what hooked me. Um, you know, Afsun, Roshan Zamir mm -hmm. back then, Trish Saunders, Marie Ziegler, um, Shannon Williams, all of these women who were in just a little bit earlier than I was, mm -hmm. welcomed me from the beginning, um, didn't make me feel like I didn't belong. Coming from judo, um, I, I came from a judo background before I wrestled, mm -hmm. and I had already competed at a, a decently high level in judo, and they welcomed me even though my wrestling technique wasn't, um, was a little unorthodox, mm -hmm. and they were kind to me and made it fun for me. Um, and being around those people made me love the sport. Oh, that's great. It's a great endorsement. And it was right at the beginning of women's wrestling starting to build to what it is today. Uh, did you have uh, an idol that you looked up to in wrestling? Uh, as you, you know, obviously made the transition from judo into wrestling and uh, did you have anyone you looked up to? I've been talking to kids a lot about mm. um, having idols or heroes in the sport mm. and I didn't have an idol or a hero in either sport, in judo or wrestling. There weren't a lot of women around before I was there. Um, that weren't my peers mm -hmm. that we could look up to that really, my peers are the ones who were the history of women's wrestling in the United States. But I talk to kids a lot, you know, the, we have um, kids when we're coaching that do the little fanboy thing where they're like, oh my God, that's mm -hmm. Jordan Burroughs, or oh my God, that's Jaden Cox. Mm -hmm. And I tell them, all these, all these people that you're idolizing or worshiping, they're just people. Mm -hmm. I said, some of them are amazing people and some of them aren't the nicest people but they're just people. So I don't think I idolized anybody or I didn't have any heroes, mm -hmm. but there were a lot of people that I really respected, mm -hmm. like deep, deep respect for. Um, the woman that I was wrestling with, absolutely I respected. Trish Saunders, who would go to USA Wrestling and fight tooth and nail to um, give us the opportunities that we had. Mm -hmm and other people that supported her in doing that. And it was one thing for the woman to fight for ourselves to have an opportunity, but I really have deep respect for the men who were there who mm. supported us when it wasn't cool to support us. Yeah. Right now it's kind of trendy. Um, women's wrestling has really done a lot to save the sport. But back then, people like Roy Oliver, like Mike DeRoe, mm -hmm. Rusty Davidson, he's um, a referee who's mm. been around a very long time. I saw him in early May at a tournament and he told me that when he started supporting the woman and refereeing for the woman he was told that it would be political suicide for him to support us mm. and look at where we look where we are now oh, well, for sure. those are the people I guess that I don't idolize but that I have really deep respect for the people mm. who had our back from the beginning yeah yeah and that was important yeah, yeah without that it's kind of hard to get to where it is today yes. because the uh, women are certainly unbelievably skilled nowadays, yeah. which is something that you guys should be proud of. What part of your personality, Sandy, uh, do you uh, attribute your success in either wrestling or judo, really, because you're a competitor, so I'm sure both of them were benefited from whatever aspect it is that you, you have. I think I never thought I was good. I still don't think I was particularly awesome at either sport. And so because I never thought I was 
good. I never thought I was a great athlete. I, I never missed practice. Mm -hmm. I would get off the plane from Europe and I'd be at practice. I'd get off the plane in the morning and be at practice that afternoon. I never missed practice. Um, and I had a fight. Like when you get on the mat, you can teach technique. And a lot of people have amazing technique. There's so many amazing technicians that never made an, a world or an Olympic team. Mm -hmm. People who are in the room every day, the wrestling room or the dojo, just tearing people up. And then they go to tournaments and something's missing, right? Mm -hmm. They don't have that, what it takes to get you past practice mm -hmm. speed and up to competition yeah. speed. And what I had was fight more than anything. I, when I got on the mat, I believed I could beat anyone. And I just wanted to go out there and tear people's heads off. I just wanted to go out there and beat people. Um, so I think the two things, not thinking that I was so good that I didn't have to work hard. And when I got out there to compete, my fight is really, I think that was my greatest attribute as an athlete. Yeah, that's great. That's a good one to have. That's yeah. for sure. You can't win without that. No, you can't. What single event in wrestling, it could be a match, it could be any experience that you have, is the most memorable for you? Um, that was another one that was hard for me because I'm really bad at remembering my matches. I, I don't remember mm -hmm. who I wrestled in the finals of the World Championships when I won. I remember matches I lost, but the matches I won, I don't remember a lot. They're two important memories for me. One of them was my first tournament ever. I went to Sunkist, um, the Sunkist Cup in, I think it was in Arizona, after a judo tournament. I was in Colorado for our US Open, flew through Arizona and stopped there for my first wrestling tournament. And Roy Oliver introduced me to Dave Schultz. Mm. He's like, hey Schultz, this is my girl Sandy. She's an Olympian from judo. She's an Olympian too, whatever. And he spent a good 20 minutes at least a good 20 minutes with me. Oh, you do judo, and what you know? What techniques do you do? And helping me transition my judo mm -hmm. technique to my wrestling technique, and it, I really appreciated him already a superstar in wrestling, mm -hmm. taking the time to work with me, who was a beginner as far as wrestling goes. I was a grappler. I was already an Olympian, but I was a beginner to the sport of wrestling and I really appreciated him taking the time and working with me. It didn't matter that I was at the time, you know, a nobody, but no, nobody that was known in the sport of wrestling anyways, mm -hmm. but um, how kind he was and how giving he was of his time and his energy, even though I think he was there to compete as well, that really, um, that's a memory that sticks with me and that was my first tournament ever. The second memory was at the World Championships the year we won. So our women's team from the United States took first in the world in 1999 by the slimmest of margins. So every match that anyone, of, anyone on our team won helped get us to that championship, um, get us that championship title. And in the semifinals, I actually lost at first. So um, there was a bad call, and our coaches uh, protested the match. Mm -hmm. So I just remember sitting there, you know, being actually being on my feet and like just bouncing around and being ready to wrestle this. I don't remember what country she was from, but being ready to yeah. wrestle her again, and her just sitting there with her head down, <coughs> and just being ready to tear her head, tear her head off when the match started again. And I beat her, and. And I ended up winning the Worlds that year, but I remember having a second opportunity and just how hungry I was to beat this woman. Yeah, I bet. Yeah. Uh, is there anything that you'd change if you were to start your career over again, Sandy? Yeah, if I were to start my career over now, there is so much more knowledge out there about how to train well and how to eat well and about the lifting and the working. I always work. I won't say always worked hard. I always, I think I worked pretty hard when I was on the mat. Mm -hmm. Any chance I had to get to a practice. But what I would do differently would be the extra stuff that people do. I, I would practice two or three times a day if that opportunity was there for me. But the extra running and the lifting and the um, diet, all of that I would have incorporated into my training. I think mm -hmm. it would have helped. Um, <laughs> yeah, good. And I think now yeah, I would have had a I would have a lot more opportunity. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think now I would have a lot more opportunity and be able to surround myself with strong partners 
to help support my training. Yeah, that would make a difference for sure. Oh yeah, yeah back then we didn't have many of us. Yeah, oh for sure. Uh, I, I also think the, uh, uh, the UFC has had a big impact in uh, people's approach toward training and weight reduction. And I mean, I think it's been a very positive thing for both groups. Yeah. Uh, what would you like to have people to remember about Sandy Ficosi? I think that what I did almost 25 years ago winning the Worlds, I understand it's a, a big accomplishment. I understand that it's important. And I think it's important because when somebody hears I'm a world champion, mm -hmm. they might take a second to actually listen to what I have to say. Mm -hmm. But I don't want to be remembered for what I did a quarter century ago. I want to be remembered for what I'm giving to kids now. Yeah, I think absolutely. it's so much more important um, to have a kid who's had a, I had a phone call today um, from a girl and she had a hard loss and she was upset. And being able to try to motivate her to continue and to motivate her for her next matches. Um, I want to be remembered for having an impact on kids, yeah. on kids in wrestling and outside of wrestling, on kids just so that their lives will be better. Yeah. And then they don't have to be world champions, they don't have to be Olympians, but I want the sport of wrestling or the sport of judo to enhance the lives of children, to make them better people. And I want to be remembered for helping with that. Yeah, that's, I'm sure you're going to be I hope so. successful in that. Well, congratulations once again on being inducted in the California Wrestling Hall of Fame. Thank you. You're welcome.